Great. It's a behind the scenes look at the Soul Food Podcast with Deepak. We're very excited to be here. Deepak, thank you for indulging us, two fans and lovers of consciousness. <laughs> Hello. So, I'm Shannon Algio, and this is Alex Kip. And Alex Kip, I'm Shannon Algio, and this is Deepak. We're going to win. <laughs> yes, which leads us That's where we to want our to start. first question. So, welcome to the Soul Food, Deepak. And so, I obviously am cheating a little bit because I was in that meeting and you said the most interesting question anyone asked you was, who are you? So let's start there. Who are you? I'm a dimensionless awareness in which uh, the entire universe is born and into which it subsides. That's my true identity. And this is uh, my uh, mask. This is my... Uh, this is my uh, social mask. It's my mm. human form for the time being. Mm. So when first for the uh, our listeners, we call them soul warriors, warriors of the soul, listening to soul feed. And if someone's like, "But I am my body. I have this body. I can touch this body. I don't know what you're talking about. What? How do you get someone from physical?" awareness into deeper consciousness if you can see it if you can touch it if it has shape color form if you can think about it if you can imagine it if you can taste it if you can smell it it's not real mm. it depends on its existence <laughs> on something that cannot be seen, but without which there's no seeing. Something that cannot be heard, but without that there's no hearing. Something that cannot be tasted or smelt, but without which there is no experience of taste or smell. What is that? You can't see it, but without it there's no seeing. Mm. So that is consciousness. You know, consciousness has no location in space-time. Where is this experiencing, this experience right now, this experience of your body, you're experiencing your body, right? Yes. You're experiencing yours. Are you aware of his body? Yes. Y yes. And mine? Yes. And this room, <laughs> right? Yes. Where is that experience happening? Tell me. Um, it's happening in my body. Where in your body is the experience of me, him, See this room happening. Huh? I, don't huh? I don't know where. I don't know where. Some people say in their eyes, in their brain, but if you go inside your brain, there's no picture of me. Mm. Okay? Furthermore, I don't fit inside your brain. I'm too big. You know? <laughs> uh, That'd be a fun experiment. I'm not, I don't fit in your eyes either. How does this room fit inside your brain? So mm -hmm. yes, there is something in the brain that's happening and that's an electrochemical phenomenon. Okay, that is called the neural correlate of consciousness. Mm -hmm. Neural correlate because when you experience me as this physical form, then in your occipital cortex mm -hmm. there's an electrochemical activity. Does the electrochemical activity cause you to see me, some people assume it does, but they, then you ask them how? How does an electrochemical produce the activity of you seeing me? Mm. They can't explain it. So in scientific circles, that's called the hard problem of consciousness. Mm. And then this question arises, who's the you that is experiencing this body, your own body, the one that you call my body. Yeah. Who's the you who's experiencing the body that we're now calling Deepak's body, or this Alex's body, or this room, or for that matter, New York City, or stars and galaxies? Who's the you who's having that experience? And where is that you? It's not in your eyes, it's not in your brain. In fact, your eyes, your brain, your body is in you. Mm. I am in you. He is in you. In fact, the whole universe is in you. But the you in which that is happening 
has no location in space time mm. and therefore not having a location in space time it has no beginning no ending no birth no death in that all experiences arise the experience of thoughts so uh, let me ask you to have a thought right now think of your house where you live your apartment okay you see an image yes okay uh, where is that image do you think there's a picture of that house in your brain there no there's just a neural <laughs> correlate right yeah but you're not seeing a neural correlate you're having a, the experience of a picture right yeah think of your mother can you hear her voice yes okay so, <laughs> so where is that happening some people say in my brain but in the brain there's electrochemicals and they don't produce sound yeah so where is experience happening of your body of your mind of all the other things that's happening in consciousness mm. and consciousness has no location in space time it has no dimensionality but and because it's not in space and time it's eternal and without that you wouldn't have the experience of your body so you know what you should do is uh, right now you can have soft eyes you know what soft eyes are like a drishti no drishti is focus eyes deep mm. focus okay so soft eyes is no focus okay now in that unfocused eyes experience your own body or become aware of your own body become aware of alex's body my this room and say who or what is having this experience and who or what is having this experience is not a person the person is an experience in consciousness and that person is not a permanent experience in consciousness because you're not the same person as you were when you were a baby mm. so if you say i'm this person which one okay. yeah the baby the teenager this one the guy was going to get old and die okay so you're getting bamboozled right now by your experiences and you're saying i'm those experiences when in fact you're the consciousness in which the experiences arise and in which they subside and those experiences them means they're modified forms of consciousness sound is a modified form of consciousness and how do you use the social media platform with consciousness and not with ego or attachment or the physical world I usually ask myself um, if what I'm doing is fun. Mm. Number two, that's good. Uh, that's so good. <laughs> uh, the second question is, am I doing it with people who are fun to be with? Mm. And the third question is, is it improving at least the lives of somebody? And if the answer is yes to all three, then I do it. Otherwise, it's it's good. Is it? I love that your first question is, is it fun? Because I think on. So for many people myself included when i feel like i'm on a serious spiritual path yeah, i have to be so grounded and meditative all the time and i lose the fun so right. seriousness be be aware be really careful about serious people okay mm. you should be aware of serious people because seriousness is a mask for self importance mm. if somebody is serious never take them seriously <laughs> Somebody serious so never <laughs> watch out Alex. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes I can get kind of serious sometimes. <laughs> and so good. Um so I'm wondering then in relation to all this. So essentially we are aware of awareness. Is that another way to That's say the way of saying it? Of consciousness. Yeah. yeah, you are a being. And being being means you exist. Right. Being existence awareness is all the same thing. Right. Being awareness existence. Now in that being there's a perturbation that we call feeling. In that being there's a perturbation that we call thinking. Mm. In that being there's a perturbation called perception. We call it the world, the body. But there is only being and its modulations. Mm. And this we can say this is a non dual being it is one with no other the other where do you exist in my awareness 
Where do I exist in your awareness? Where does he exist in our awareness? That field of awareness, which even the field is the wrong word, because field gives you a picture of dimensions. Right. That dimensionless field of awareness is our common home. And this goes back to, in your book, The Future of God, this idea of a single source. Single source. Let's yeah. take a, like a little you know, reservoir from where all the streams and all the rivers and all the oceans and all the clouds and all the rain. Yeah. Everything is coming from that single field. And for somebody who's maybe new to this concept of single source or all that, and maybe perhaps is an atheist, or like, I know you get in a lot of arguments with people like Bill O'Reilly and whatnot. Could you I used to be an atheist till I realized <laughs> I was God. <laughs> I used to be an atheist before I realized I was God. That's there you it. go. You mm. can close it and right now there. I'm God in drag. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Deepak Chopra, God in drag. That's so, it. And so are you. So Thank what you. would... What would be, I guess, could you explain this in maybe scientific terms? Because you're known for that too. Known for sort of merging the science with spirituality. And it's an amazing time where that's starting to happen. Science deals with what we call the empirical world. Okay? Mm -hmm. So when you ask somebody, this is a scientific fact, they say, what's the evidence? Mm -hmm. Okay? So, when something is an empirical fact, then we all can observe fact and science give it units of mass and energy. So we say the world is made up of matter. Matter is made up of molecules. Molecules are made up of atoms. Atoms are made up of particles. But now we have a problem. Once we get to the particles, when you're not looking at a particle, or when it's not in interact, it disappears. It becomes a wave. Unlike a particle, which has units of mass and energy, which has a location in space and time, a wave has no location in space time. It doesn't have units of mass and energy. So where is the wave? They say it's everywhere. And then what is it a wave of? It's a wave of possibilities. And so what is a wave of possibilities? It could only be consciousness. Now, the scientific world has brought us to what we say the doorstep of the empirical, sub-empirical. Because the particle is empirical. It can be observed, weighed, give units of mass and energy. But the wave is, exists in the sub-empirical world. You can't enter the door. Once you come to this step, Science stops. Mm -hmm. Now you have to go backwards. If you want to enter this door, you have to actually go backwards through self-reflection, through meditation, through being aware, through transcendence, through actually knowing the difference between what you see and what is. Mm -hmm. Because what you see is just the camouflage, the mask of a deeper reality, which is totally invisible, totally dimensionless and sub-empirical. Where is science now? Science tells us that 96% of the universe is dark energy and dark matter. What is it? We don't know. Mm. It's not atomic because it doesn't, you know, dark matter. It's not atomic. It doesn't reflect light, absorb light, emit light. What is dark energy? It's just a name that we give to an expanding universe. The universe is expanding, so we assume it's expanding because of some energy which is the opposite of gravity. Okay, but how do people do the science? They create mathematical equations. Mm. So, you know, what is life? It's biochemistry. What is biochemistry? It's chemistry. What is chemistry? It's physics. What's physics? It's mathematics. What's mathematics? Now, where is mathematics? It's not in the empirical world, it's in consciousness. Mm. Okay, so you once you enter this level, science cannot take you further. And so only 4% of the universe is atomic. Of that 4% which is atomic, 99.9999% is invisible. Because it's interstellar dust that has not become stars, galaxies, it's mostly hydrogen and helium. The visible universe, which is millions Millions, billions of galaxies, billions and trillions of planets, 
um, is 0.01 percent that's made up of atoms. That 0.01 percent then ultimately is waves which are invisible. Mm -hmm. So what's the universe made of? Nothing. Okay, <laughs> where does it come from? Nothing. What is the nothing that becomes everything? What is the nothing that becomes everything? What is the nothing that becomes everything? People who delve into these matters, not just scientifically but experientially, they say the nothing that becomes everything is consciousness. It's infinite. It's being.